Are there lab tests or other sorts of tests that a physician could order that would help uh, paint a better picture of whether uh, elder abuse had occurred? There absolutely are. Rhonda, unfortunately, there is no lab test that we know of now that definitively shows that elder abuse or neglect has occurred. But I'll talk about some lab tests that might help. Lab tests might suggest, for example, that a patient has dehydration. They might suggest that a patient has malnutrition. They might suggest that a patient has anemia or what's called a, a low hemoglobin or low blood count. They might suggest that a patient has rhabdomyolysis, which is a big fancy word that I learned in medical school, but it means muscle breakdown. They might suggest that a patient has what's called hyperthermia, or very high temperature, or hypothermia, a very low temperature. And again, no, none of these themselves would be 100% definitive for abuse or neglect, but taken together, they might suggest a picture that is concerning or suspicious. In addition, I wanna talk for a second about radiologic tests. Chest x-rays, for example, are very commonly uh, ordered in uh, the emergency department in cases where patients have fallen. And a chest x-ray might not only show acute injuries, but it might also show old rib fractures. And old rib fractures might be something that's suggestive of abuse. In addition, when, when a patient falls on their face, and as an emergency room doctor, I see patients that fall on their face, we sometimes get a CAT scan of the maxillofacial area. And again, a CAT scan of a maxillofacial area might show acute injuries if they've broken a bone during the fall. But as with a chest X-ray, if we see also old injuries, also fractures that look like they happened a week ago or a month ago or six months ago, that also might be concerning. So again, unfortunately, neither of these tests is at all definitive for elder abuse, but taken together, they might be suggestive. And they can be used by emergency physicians and others who are wanting to identify abuse. And they also can be used by prosecutors and by law enforcement who want to support and develop a larger picture that is strongly suggestive that abuse has occurred. And in addition to the lab test that I mentioned, um, we can actually check via urine or blood for the presence and the levels of many different medications and toxins. And that can actually be useful for evaluation of elder abuse and neglect. For example, if there's a patient that's supposed to be on a specific medication and we find that the level is much lower than we'd expect or that the medication is not in the patient's bloodstream or urine, that would suggest that maybe the medication is being withheld either on purpose or through neglect. Also, and this is unfortunately an increasing problem, sometimes, particularly with opiate pain medications, an abuser might be diverting a medication for their own use or for sale. And so if we were to test and to find that a particular neglect patient did not have uh, opiates in their system, even though they were prescribed opiates, that might be also concerning. In addition, we can find that the levels of these medications uh, are much higher than we'd expect. And that might represent an either unintentional or frankly intentional overdose of medications. And third, we might find the presence of, of substances in a patient's body that we wouldn't expect, the medications that they haven't been prescribed, or toxins. And that might suggest even poisoning. And so ultimately, those are also lab tests that might pot potentially assist physicians in identifying cases of elder abuse and neglect, and also prosecutors and law enforcement in, in, uh, in adjudicating those cases. What are lab tests or other medical tests that you as a physician might order and determining whether someone had been neglected or not? With respect to laboratory data, I think the most important thing to really remember is a high sodium level is really the most concerning thing when someone comes in because that is a very good reflection of dehydration. And dehydration can be deadly in older adults. In fact, it can portend as high as a 70% mortality rate of individuals that come into the hospital. So I think high sodiums um, and malnutrition are the two most important things. Malnutrition is reflected in the albumin level and the pre-albumin levels. 
and can also be reflected by a low lymphocyte count. So all of these laboratory data, not any one of them will will tell the whole story, but when you start to add them up, and this is the whole story of neglect, is adding up these little pieces of information that form a larger picture. I can't give you one absolute lab test that's gonna say this is abuse or this is neglect, but I can tell you that when I start to see someone whose body weight body mass index is less than 20, and I start seeing someone whose sodium is above 160, and now I'm raising both eyebrows, and now I see someone who has terrible skin care and pressure ulcers on multiple areas, now I'm starting to put together a picture. And I think it's really important that we view neglect in that way.